Hello guys, Winston here. Remember back before Christmas how I promised to revisit the lightsaber I made using two-sided machining? Well, I haven't forgotten about that and I'm back to finish the job. This video will be about how I made that lightsaber. Well, technically this will be a different lightsaber with a slightly higher level of detail, but the same basic design. If you're new to this channel and are wondering why I made a lightsaber to begin with, check out the videos of my collaboration with DIY Engineering, links in the description below. David and I made a Star Wars themed beer tap and my lightsaber was the tap handle. Let's touch on the design itself and then get on to how I did my cam setup. I constructed my lightsaber in several segments to make the best use of the various types of wood I had at my disposal. The core segments were machined from book matched halves of ash so that I could carve internal features in them while hiding the seam. My original lightsaber needed to retain a 3 8 inch coupling nut at the bottom for compatibility with standard beer taps, a brass clevis to interface with a linear actuator, and passages for wiring to control LEDs. My new lightsaber didn't need any of those features, but for the sake of backwards compatibility and not having to post new toolpaths, I'm going to stick to the original design. Let's take a look at the cam process for one half of my lightsaber. My stock setup assumes that I have a block of wood face to have a machine level surface to start from. This top face will be my Z-height reference for all operations. My XY origin point will be the center of the bounding box that contains my model. The first operations are to cut out the inside features of my lightsaber. This way, when I flip the part over, the flat side will still be able to rest securely against my wasteboard. Using an adaptive clear, I'll knock out the majority of my stock material, then I'll come back with 2D pockets and contours to clean up any perpendicular faces, and finally I'll use a parallel toolpath to smooth out all of my sloped surfaces. I'm using a combination of ball and flat 8th inch end mills for this. On the flip side, my Z-Origin will be the wasteboard which is coincident with the face that I just machined. You always want to keep the same reference surfaces whenever possible to minimize any errors that might be introduced if your stock thickness varies slightly. Again, I'll first start with an adaptive clear to remove the bulk of my material, stopping about a millimeter from the bottom of my stock. If I cut out my part completely, it'll separate from my stock prematurely. I'll use a 2D contour to define as much of that outer profile as possible. In certain places, I'll use tabs so that I can cut through to my wasteboard and still keep my parts in place. And finally, I'll use a parallel toolpath to smooth out the shape of my lightsaber. I'm using a flat end mill so I can make contact with my piece all the way down to the table. Executing this process required me to be able to precisely locate my part so that I could machine it from both sides. There are a couple ways I could do this. One would be to reference my origin off my stock, so using an edge finder or a touch probe to locate my piece and set a zero position appropriately. However, doing this requires at least two sides of my stock to be perfectly aligned with my machine axes, and I didn't feel like making a guide system to do that. Another method would be to machine a pocket in my wasteboard so that my stock would sit snugly within it. By knowing the position of the pocket, you know the position of your stock. That's what I did in my last video where I machined an aluminum tray. However, doing this requires that your part's outer dimensions be known exactly, and I didn't feel like machining my stock into a perfect rectangular block. So I chose option 3, indexing pins. By machining holes in my stock and wasteboard, I could use some indexing pins to align my piece after the flip. You only need two holes to establish a position and orientation in the XY plane, I showed that off when I machined my Harry Potter wand. In this case, however, I couldn't put my indexing holes on the line defined by Y equals 0. I needed every last millimeter of my stock's width for the lightsaber, so I placed my holes in the corners of my stock. My XY origin for this operation was also the same origin of my lightsaber, so everything stayed centered. Now, the indexing pins I'm using are pretty low-tech. These aren't precision ground steel dowel pins from McMaster Carp. They're actually rough-cut sections of aluminum rod stock that I bought at the home center. For the short lengths that I'm using, their diameter and straightness are good enough. To make them easier to insert, I added a taper to the ends. With this system in place, I was able to easily machine my lightsaber halves in an extremely precise way. Most of the accent pieces on my original lightsaber were basic 2D shapes requiring only a contour operation to fabricate, but since I wanted to extract more detail out of the wood, I modeled up some more complex features to attach to my hilt. First up to be redesigned were the grip segments. On version 1.0, these were 3D single-sided machining operations, but I found that the process for getting them to conform to the curvature of my hilt was really tedious and not always accurate, so I made these with two-sided machining instead. A half-inch cove bit put a nice concave radius on the bottom, then I flipped my stock over and switched to an eighth-inch end mill. My first test was with an upcut, but purple heart can be a little stringy, so I quickly switched to a downcutting end mill. Based on my experience with Lightsaber 1.0, I made the features of my new grips taller and thinner. These would be truer to the original movie prop, and I was confident that they would still be strong enough to stand up to normal handling. I made the coupling segment in the middle more clamp-like with the addition of a fake cam lock and a textured inlay. 
This better approximates the appearance of the original Graflex-derived lightsaber. The rest of the hilt was dressed up in some walnut pieces. I cut these from a 0.4 inch thick piece of stock using a 2mm end mill. This cutter was perfect because it had enough reach to cut all the way through my stock while still carving relatively fine features. It was also a down cutting end mill so it wasn't fighting against my adhesive work holding and the parts that I machined came out really clean. I glued all of my pieces together after some hand sanding. To ensure I spaced out the grip pieces on the handle evenly, I used a piece of tape as a template. This way I could mark out a regular spacing and transfer it to the hilt. I was working on this thing really late and almost made a tragic mistake. I glued these in upside down, but I realized my screw up just in time and I was able to pry my grip pieces off and flip them around. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be the first time I made that mistake on this project. I also glued in my coupling segment upside down. The cam lock feature is supposed to be on the other side and flipped. This is 100% down to me rushing and not getting enough sleep. I've been pushing hard trying to finish this project before I leave for California, but I was facing really tight deadlines on a project at work this week so I couldn't call out sick like I normally would. On more than one occasion, I found myself going to bed at 1 or 2 a.m. I'm nearing the end of a one-year sprint phase in my life where I'm balancing an office job while trying to push the workshop hobby to its absolute limits. Bay Area Maker Faire 2018 is the finish line for me, at which point I'll make a determination about the future direction of my career. But I digress. The point is, I'm stressed out, stretched thin, so at this point, I really can't be bothered to agonize over the fact that this one piece is upside down. If that bothers you though, you can go make your own lightsaber. The brass clevis needed to use this lightsaber in a motorized beer tap wouldn't be necessary if I just wanted to use it as a prop, but I still had to fill that hole with something, so I decided to make a brass plug that would sit flush with the handle. I machined this on my Nomad because I needed to show it some love, but also because its spindle runs slow enough for me to use my center finder to locate my stock in its vise. The stock in this case was 3 8 inch square rod stock in brass. The cutter was an 8 inch end mill running about a 1 thou chip load at 10,000 RPM. I profiled the outside, interpolated a hole in the middle, and got a head start on parting my piece from the remainder of my stock. After sawing it off, I tapped it for quarter twenty on my recently acquired hand tapper. To complete my wooden lightsaber, I needed a blade. For that, I bought some one-inch dowel, cut it down to length, and drilled a hole in the bottom to receive some threaded rod. Since I don't have a drill press, I made an MDF sleeve to use as a guide for my drill bit. This ensures that I drill into my dowel straight and centered. This guide block will eventually get chewed up because its bore isn't protected with a metal bushing, but for prototyping, it's a good enough solution. After sanding and shaping the dowel using a drill in the absence of a lathe, I stained the dowel blue. I made sure to use a wood conditioner before this step because cheaper woods like pine and poplar don't always take stain well. For finish, I went with a spray polyurethane. On the first prototype, I had used mineral oil because I didn't have time to let anything cure, but spray poly is easier to get into all the nooks and crannies and lends a bit more luster and durability to the part. And with that, my personal lightsaber was complete. If you couldn't tell, I was really happy with how this thing turned out. Next week, I'll be flying to California to begin a two-week road trip terminating at Bay Area Maker Faire, where I'll be talking in a panel with Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, and Claire Mason, another multi-talented maker. We'll be closing out the DIY content creator stage on Saturday, so if you're in the area, stop by and say hi. Plus, I could always use more people on Team CNC in the audience. Also, if you're in the LA area, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm looking to have an informal get-together and hang out with some of the guys from Carbide 3D on Tuesday, May 8th. Details will follow, but expect it to be somewhere around Torrance, probably at a pub or brewery. I want to thank you guys all very much for watching. I'll be back with another CNC-related project video in two or three weeks, and may the fourth be with you.